In this video, I'm going to show you how to load an 818 Scut kiln for a glaze fire. Hi, Marie here, back with another informative kiln video for you. This video is a request from one of my subscribers, Mary Jean. Smaller kilns can be a little trickier to load. I'm going to do a glaze fire loading. I've already vacuumed her out, so let's start loading. This 818 has a 3 inch brick. It's 16 and a half inches across and 17 and a half inches deep. Keep in mind, if you have the two and a half inch brick, you will have more room inside of your kiln. I have 15 inch shelves. If you have the two and a half inch brick, you will have 16 inch shelves. Start with three one inch posts. Never place your kiln shelf on the bottom of the kiln. You need air to flow in between the bottom of your kiln and your shelf. Also, use three posts for more stability. More than three will cause low spots and instability in your shelves and warping of your shelves. When placing the shelf on the post, you want your shelf to be on an angle so you don't hit the thermal coupler and be careful not to hit the sides. Get very even all the way around. Very good. Now I'm using the two inch posts to make the best of the space I have. I can't use higher posts because the thermal coupler needs two inch clearance around. So if I go any higher, then it'll only have an inch clearance. So all of the short things that I've created, I'll put on the bottom. When placing the posts, they should be aligned with the post below for support, otherwise they'll weaken the shelves. So I always put my finger right here to feel the post to make sure that they're aligned. So you can't see it. Whoop, there we go. Make sure they're aligned. Perfect. I place cookies down first to get an idea of where I'm going to put my pottery and how to space it. Now, of course, not everyone uses cookies and you don't have to, but if you don't use cookies, make sure you use kiln wash. You have to protect your shelves. You don't want glaze melting all over. <laughs> Now I know where my glazed ware is going to go. My lid, tiny little bowl. And two other small bowls. Okay, scoot this over a little bit. You don't want any of your pottery to be hanging over the shelf. And you don't want any glaze dripping onto the bottom of your kiln. So be aware of that. Now again, putting my shelf in on an angle, being very careful not to hit the thermal coupler or the walls. Getting it as even as I can around. Keep in mind that these walls are very, very soft and you can knock pieces of brick off very easily. I'm going to use the six inch posts. And remember, feel the side. 
feel the side. It's a good habit to get into to make sure that the post below is supporting. Remember, it should be that way all the way down. Now I'll place my cookies down. This does help so I'm not handling my glazed wares often either because it's like a jigsaw puzzle. And you find yourself moving your pieces around to fit properly. like I'm doing right now. See how I left the space here for the thermocoupler? When placing your pieces in the kiln, you want the taller pieces in the middle for better heat distribution. You want to make sure your glazed ware is at least a quarter of an inch away from each other. Otherwise, they'll fuse in the firing. And from your pulse also, notice this, it's too close. So I will move this over and make sure that my handle isn't hanging over the edge of the shelf. I'll use a smaller piece right here. Perfect. I want to move to see the handle is too close to the thermocoupler so I'm going to move that over. that it's a quarter of an inch away and two inches here. That's good clearance right there. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Not hanging over. go straight in on the last one because it's past the thermocoupler. Nice and stable. Perfect. Place my cookies first. Let's see about where I want my bowls to be. Good. Good clearance. You don't want your pottery too close to the top either. Your pottery will expand a bit while it's firing and then it contracts again but it may hit the top of your kiln. So you want to make sure you have enough clearance, at least an inch on the top. Of 
quarter of an inch apart. Perfect. You also want to make sure that you're not too close to the top peep because that'll be open throughout your firing and it's going to be a little cooler right in this area. So you want your pottery to be at least two inches away from the top peep. Remember, it's as easy as one, two, three. One inch post on the bottom, at least, so the air flows through. Two inches away from the thermal coupler, all the way around. And three post per shelf, even if it's half a shelf. I was able to put a plate, two small bowls, a lid, a tiny bowl, nine mugs, and four bowls in this kiln. Of course, it does depend on the size of your pieces. For the amount that I make at a time, this kiln is perfect for me. Keep an eye out for my KMT controller programming video that I'm putting together for you. And to get more information on kilns, you can check out my Pottery Crafters website. When you like, subscribe, and watch my other videos, you support this channel and help me to make more videos like this one. Head on over to this how to make a yarn bowl video or questions for beginner potters about kilns. If you do, I get to play with more clay. Let's stay dirty.